Well, it's time to desiccate the rye crop. It's about 12 to 18 inches. It's plenty big. We're going to be planting corn within the week. So it's time to do a burn down on that. You have to kill it off early enough so that it does not uh, kill the corn because it has an allopathic effect with its root nodules. If it touches the corn roots, it kills it or stuns it. It's not happy when, when they're planted together. So you gotta get that burned down uh, ahead of time. I will have to say our uh, cover crop, the oats did exactly what we wanted them to and the rye is awesome. It's a good ground cover, a lot less erosion. We're gonna get going on that. All right, here we are. This spot might be familiar to you. Look at it this winter. This was rye. That was oats. That's planted with onions. This is gonna be corn. If you're wondering what we're rolling with today, we got the uh, Hardy Commander 750 and the Kubota 126GX. Deadly combo. No, seriously, it is. When you hit a bump with this at like eight miles an hour, you almost died. All right, let's get to it. Everything sprayed. Just gotta wait for it to uh, start looking sick. But this first spray of the year, kind of pull all the filters on the sprayer, make sure that there isn't anything deposited from the tank into the filters. Get the thing cleaned out. good. Yeah, that's what I want on my camera. Lube up the O-ring. Filter in. That's it. All sprayers wrapped up for now. On to the next thing. out here doing the variable rate potash. He already did the phosphorus and the starter is all done through the planter. Alright, been getting the soybean planter 
switch with rain for lunch, go uh, plant some beans for a little bit. Well, we just got filled back up with beans. We got 33 acres out of that box, so that would be about 175,000 population, which we're shooting for 180, so that's pretty good for the first time out. Those were Seedway variety, and we bought those from a really cool guy that we do business with. His name is Joe Barczewski, and I can't tell you how cool he is. You just gotta see it for yourself. But uh, yep, good guy, good grower. Well, we're going. Got the grain drill, planting soybeans right now. We've been all over the place. We had the technician from Monroe working on the corn planter. Had to go there. Ooh, a blinky. Ooh, another blinky. I got two blinkies per row. Ooh. We sprayed onions this morning. It's when we want to get our pre-emergent on. You can tell by them being close to the surface. The timing of that is very critical. Disc ripping, then got the field cultivator moved over here afternoon and all the packing before the grain drill and getting the rocks picked before that I feel like a ping pong ball but we're gone see it's going in the ground finally soybeans corn last year gotta get this ground worked up rains finishing planting soybeans at the other farm he will be here shortly so we gotta get our butts moving let's get in the 8650 and get field cultivating
Got her greased up. Let's get it checked out and start it up. A lock and lube. Your ends make it possible to farm YouTube while greasing. Maybe you should sponsor somebody. Good. Our soybeans planted. Check. We got them sprayed. Check. We're getting the corn planter out. Seems a little ass backwards, doesn't it? It does. Well, we had a technician out Tuesday to work on the corn planter to get it set up. Went through the health checks for the planter and couldn't get things to come online. Long story longer, there's a jumper wire that goes from the SRM to the controller. For the V apply, which is what we added with Tom and Nate, it wasn't the right resistance. So basically, the system doesn't know where the first controller is in line in the system. So, Precision sending us new cables. It really sucks. It really does. This is the issues with technology. It's very frustrating. Just when you think you've got everything just right, there's just something so silly that happens. And the problem is now is we're either losing bushels not planting or we're losing bushels not applying our pop-ups. So you gotta kinda find where's the line where you go or not go. So today, got everything done that I possibly could around the farm to focus on corn. Tomorrow, we're planning on planting with our starter system the way it was and not using the pop-up system. We've got to go. It is what it is. The unfortunate thing is that we needed the technician here, run water through this thing and just make sure everything's good to go probably a good month ago could have even done it two months ago because we've got a nice heated shop they're just so overrun with work and we understand that but everybody's losing on this right now we're losing bushels for our system that we paid a lot of money for the company that's supplying us with the fertility I mean, well they're not going to sell it but we're going to be planting without it all around really sucks there is a lot of technology in these tractors, planters, and farmers adopt this more than any industry out there. There's just gobs of technology in there, and there's a need for up and coming people, and it's all different levels. There could be a person that just installs it, and then there's the guy that troubleshoots it and deals with the software and stuff like that, and then there's the guy that, you know, could be sitting in an office in a nine to five job at a call center working with us on the phone to get these things up and running it's a big industry it's lacking a lot of people and there's such a need for young guys to come into this because it's growing at a rate that can't be supported it's a real bummer but what are you going to do let's get this planter out get some water in it and See if I can get it to work. Wish me luck. 